OpenAI just dropped ChatGPT5, its biggest leap since the original launch. A million token memory, live data wired straight into its reasoning core. But here's the real question. Does it crush the competition? In minutes, we'll put it against Claude, Grok, and Google's newest Gemini to see where it's untouchable and where it still legs. Then there's Google DeepMind's Genie 3, a simulation engine that builds whole virtual worlds where you can change the weather, fast forward time, and navigate in real time. And Meta just poured $29 billion into building an AI supercomputer that could dwarf anything on the planet. GPT-5 isn't just a faster or larger GPT-4. It's been redesigned to think differently, merging what used to be separate modes into one flexible adaptive brain. GPT-5 uses what OpenAI calls a layered reasoning architecture. Instead of flipping between separate modes for coding, browsing, math, or images, it runs everything under a dynamic routing controller that sits above the transformer. This controller watches the conversation in real time, figures out what each part needs, and activates the right reasoning layers on demand. So if you ask a question that needs reading a chart, writing code to process it, and then summarizing the result, GPT-5 keeps all those steps in the same, context-synchronized attention space. Each reasoning layer can use its own specialized parameters. That means it can run a high-precision math module alongside an image encoder at the same time, without losing track of where you are in the conversation. One of GPT-5's biggest upgrades is its million-plus token memory. But it's not just a bigger version of old-school attention. It uses sparse block attention with chunk recurrence, splitting input into meaningful blocks, and linking them with learned memory states instead of rereading everything each time. To keep facts straight in long sessions, it uses cross-block state normalization, rebalancing signals so early context doesn't fade. The result? You can load an entire code base, several research papers, or a full video transcript, and GPT-5 works on it like it's one seamless prompt. GPT-5 is connected to live data retrieval pipelines that are not simply bolted on after inference. They're orchestrated by the same reasoning controller that manages tool use. When a knowledge gap is detected, low confidence generation from the model's internal probability maps, the controller can launch a low latency browsing subagent. This subagent fetches results, vector embeds them on the fly, and streams the embeddings back into the active context. So the next token predictions incorporate verified timestamped information. The system flags retrieval events in the output to maintain transparency and facilitate downstream auditing. This approach has measurably reduced hallucination rates and public benchmarks by an order of magnitude compared to GPT-4's web augmented variants. A key capability for technical users is reasoning effort control, the ability to set GPT-5's thinking depth for a given query. In low mode, the model truncates multi-step planning to save tokens and latency. In medium mode, it performs standard multi-hop reasoning with light self-critique. In high mode, it engages irritative self-refinement loops where outputs are internally scored, revised, and rescored before emission. This parameter is exposed through both the API and ChatGPT's advanced mode UI, and is especially useful in contexts like autonomous code execution, complex multi-document synthesis, and strictly structured output generation. So yes, GPT-5 lets you dial its thinking power like a precision instrument. But how will it fare against its real-world rivals? The GPT-5 is the newest, shiniest toy. But is it the clear frontrunner? The reality is more complex, and in certain niche workloads, it's still playing catch-up. Let's break down where each heavyweight stands. Across standardized reasoning benchmarks, think MMLU Pro, GPQA Diamond, and the latest Big Bench Hard. GPT-5 posts a measurable leap over Claude Opus 4.1 in raw accuracy. This is partly due to its unified reasoning architecture, where every mode, text, code, imaging, browsing shares the same core context and memory state. Claude's architecture, while extremely strong, still runs a more modular design for reasoning versus coding. And here's where it shows. On sustained, multi-file code generation, Claude Opus 4.1 still edges out GPT-5. Technical devs report Claude keeps an internal, semantic map of the project longer without losing track of function dependencies. GPT-5 narrows this gap by leveraging cross-block state normalization and a 1M token context window. But in practical dev work over 30 plus files, Opus maintains better namespace, discipline, and comment coherence. Elon Musk recently claimed that Grok 4 Heavy was smarter two weeks ago than GPT-5 is now. But is this statement the truth? From a technical standpoint, it's more about architecture philosophy than simple IQ difference. Grok's privateer employs a multi-agent reasoning stack. Instead of one monolithic model doing all the work, it spins up specialized agents, some for planning, 
others for tool execution, others for error checking, then merges their outputs in a consensus pass. The result can feel sharper for complex, multi-constraint reasoning problems. By contrast, GPT-5's unified stack handles everything in one context flow. The advantage is seamless memory across modes and fewer API hops, but it sacrifices the parallel specialist effect Grok can deliver when tuned aggressively. Despite the benchmarks, real-world users on Reddit have posted nuanced feedback. GPT-5 performs much worse than Opus 4.1 in my use. Yet, this usually comes from specific workflows. For example, heavy refactoring of legacy code where Claude's long-term structural retention pays off. Or dense legal or academic writing with strict citation format. Claude often maintains style guides more rigidly over 10k plus tokens. The takeaway, GPT-5 dominates in breadth and cross-modal reasoning, but performance perception depends heavily on task type and whether the model's unified design benefits that specific job. Assuming we're looking at the latest Gemini iteration, Gemini Ultra, its biggest play is deep Google ecosystem integration. While GPT-5 can browse and integrate data live, Gemini can tap Google Search, Docs, Sheets, and Drive APIs with native-level context retention. From a reasoning standpoint, Gemini's standout is nested reasoning trees, breaking a single complex question into multiple layered subtasks, each with its own verification pass. GPT-5 now approximates this through adaptive reasoning effort controls, but Gemini's approach is more explicitly hierarchical in task decomposition. Where GPT-5 wins is scale and unification. Its 1M plus token context and cross-block state normalization allow it to process mixed media, multi-source projects in a single conversation thread without resetting mode or losing context. Gemini still segments modes internally, even if the handoff is seamless to the user. The scoreboard today looks like this. GPT-5, best all-rounder, unified context, top and benchmarks. Claude Opus 4.1, king of sustained, multi-file coding and structured long-form writing. Grok 4 Heavy, architecturally bold with multi-agent reasoning, sometimes sharper on complex multi-constraint problems. Gemini Ultra, tightest ecosystem integration and explicit task decomposition. But the bigger picture? The gaps are narrower than ever, and the best model now depends less on raw IQ and more on whether it's paired to the right task, data set, and tool chain. DeepMind's Genie 3 isn't just another generative model. It's a 3D simulation engine that can spin up entire worlds on demand and keep them coherent for minutes at a time. This is a step toward AI that doesn't just describe environments, it lives inside them. Genie 3 operates on an autoregressive frame-by-frame generation loop. Each rendered frame isn't just a static guess, it's conditioned on a rolling environment memory state. This means it tracks where objects, lighting, and entities were in prior frames, maintaining temporal coherence and physical consistency across time-dependent events like moving shadows, water ripples, or character motion. Where earlier models collapse after a few seconds, losing spidal alignment or deforming objects, Genie 3 can run uninterrupted for minutes, keeping the rules of its simulated world intact. The killer feature? Dynamic event prompting mid-simulation. You can start in a calm forest scene, then inject a storm prompt and watch weather systems roll naturally, raindrops hitting the camera lens, wind affecting tree movement. It's not limited to weather. Prompt in new characters, alter the time of day, or shift the environment entirely from summer to winter without breaking the world state. Genie 3 applies these changes in a way that respects its current frame history so objects carry over realistically into the new conditions. Genie 3 isn't just for visuals, it's built for agent training. The model can feed real-time simulated states to systems like DeepMind's SEMA. Crucially, its response system is action-driven, not goal-driven, meaning it reacts purely to an agent's moves without biasing toward pre-scripted outcomes. This makes it ideal for unpredictable scenario training, where agents need to handle edge cases, emergent behaviors, and unexpected environmental changes. Think disaster response robots navigating a collapsing building one moment and a flood the next, all inside a controlled sim. However, at the moment, Genie 3 comes with constraints. First, there's only limited action space. Agents can only interact in predefined ways. Full freeform physical manipulation isn't here yet. Second, no native multi-agent modeling. It can't yet simulate multiple independent AIs acting in the same world without hacks. Last but not least, shallow real-world accuracy. The physics engine is visually convincing, but it's not precise enough for engineering-grade simulations. Even with these limitations, Genie 3 marks a significant leap toward persistent, interactive AI environments. It's less video game and more a living lab. And as the action space and multi-agent features expand, it could become the backbone for training the next generation of real-world capable AI systems. When you see a $29 billion line item on a balance sheet, 
you know something's about to change. Meta isn't just buying more GPUs, they're building an AI-first compute grid designed to feed next-gen foundation models at unprecedented scale. The investment covers three main pillars. First, compute fabric expansion. Meta is deploying clusters of NVIDIA Blackwell and H100 GPUs in multi-pod configurations, tied together with NVLink switch systems for near lossless interconnect. This architecture reduces internode latency to the microsecond range, critical for training models with trillion parameter counts without bottlenecking gradient synchronization. Second, storage and data pipeline modernization. They're shifting to tiered storage, SSD-backed hot data for active training batches, HDD for archives, and cold object storage for long-term retention. The data ingestion layer uses streaming prefetched to keep GPUs saturated even during complex multimodal training runs. Third, thermal and energy efficiency upgrades. With power draws in the megawatt range per data hall, Meta is rolling out liquid immersion cooling for dense GPU racks, reclaiming waste heat into local energy grids. This isn't just about sustainability, it enables higher thermal envelopes, so the GPUs can run at maximum boost clocks for longer training cycles. The strategic aim, position Meta not just as a consumer AI player, but as one of the few hyperscalers capable of hosting AGI scale training runs entirely in-house. This is why Meta is also quietly investing in Waveform's AI. Waveform's AIs often slip under the radar, but acquiring it could change the way Meta builds and trains its models. Their specialty is ultra-fast, high-quality synthetic data, and their real advantage is in transforming signals across different domains. Waveforms doesn't just generate text or images. It can simulate sensor-level waveforms, LiDAR sweeps, multi-mic audio fields, and RF signatures in a way that's statistically indistinguishable from real captures. This means Meta can train models for AR, VR, robotics, and multimodal assistance without waiting for massive real-world data collection. At the core is their proprietary neural codec stack, compressing raw waveform data by factors of 50 to 100 times with negligible signal degradation. In practical terms, that lets Meta stream terabyte scale data set to GPU clusters without saturating the network fabric. Waveforms' pipeline can adjust data parameters on the fly, environmental noise levels, occlusion patterns, or device responsive curves perfect for stress testing multimodal models under edge case conditions. To summarize, why did Meta buy Waveforms? Because this tech plugs straight into Meta's reality labs and AI research. For Llama's future iterations, it can mean richer multi-sensor embeddings and AI agents that don't just talk and see, but hear and sense the world with lab-grade precision. GPT-5 is no longer just a text model. It's a unified intelligence stack, one that routes between reasoning, browsing, coding, and vision in a single context-aware process. You've got a million-plus token context window, real-time knowledge injection, and granular control over reasoning depth, a toolkit that feels like a fusion of IDE, search engine, and research assistant all running at inference speed. Across the model ecosystem, GPT-5 currently feels the most versatile. It's the Swiss Army knife. Grok still has an edge in multi-agent orchestration, pulling in parallel reasoners for creative or chaotic problem solving. Claude Opus 4.1 remains the coding endurance champ for sustained, multi-file projects where context stitching over hours matters more than speed. Gemini keeps evolving with deep Google ecosystem hooks, leveraging docs, search, and drive integrations in ways no API-only model can match. Then there's Genie 3, a peek into the agentic simulation future, real-time, auto-aggressive 3D world generation that remembers physics and state for minutes at a time. The kind of environment where agent training isn't hypothetical. It's live, dynamic, and reactive. And in the background, Meta is flexing a $29 billion infrastructure war chest. That's not just racks of GPUs. It's neural codec compression for synthetic sensor data, hyperscale networking for AI workloads, and a push toward models that perceive and respond emotionally in voice. Want a line-by-line -line teardown of GPT-5's reasoning layers? Exactly how it decides when to browse, when to code, when to simulate? That's coming next. Hit subscribe so you don't miss it.